Um, of course, this is um, the first of the voting parties for the Commons Prize. And our hope is that uh, we can help the trusted seed members who will be voting get to know a little bit more about the nominations that they'll be voting on. And the timeline is we are here in voting round one. The end of this vote, we will have three to five finalists. And then those finalists will go into the next round of voting. And from that, a winner will be selected and that community will be awarded the prize. So we are, uh, we are here. The voting for this round ends on the 17th. There are 36 nominations um, here in Token Log. And um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for uh, for coming, and thanks for all those the nominations. I think there's just been such an, a tremendous show of um, you know the need for commons and communities' desire to deploy their own commons. Um, Griff is back. Cool. I'm going to pass to Griff if you want to do the explanation on uh, who can vote and how to vote. Sure. So. Uh I just noticed the event link is wrong. It's sending everyone to the community hall. Uh, so I don't know if uh, someone, uh, Yunaisi could fix that maybe. But uh, the how to vote is, well, who can vote? Any trusted seed member uh, who has activated their trusted seed membership. So you have to actually have paid dues uh, at some point in the last two years. Uh, to become a, a legal member of the Swiss Association. And with that, you end up getting uh, now trust tokens. It used to be CSAC tokens. We actually just upgraded to, to trust tokens. And so this is the first activity you can do with your new trusted seed tokens. And uh, actually, let me share screen really. Oh, no, I am sharing screen. Uh, so this is, uh, this is how you vote. So once you're a trusted seed member, and you can become a trusted seed member now and start to vote, uh, but once you're a trusted seed member, then you can uh, vote using this app. Token log sometimes, though, is a little tricky. It doesn't always load right. Uh, it is definitely a beta beta software, but it's so nice. Uh, so sometimes you may have to switch from X uh, from XDI to Ethereum mainnet uh, on MetaMask. And uh, and that's a good if it's not working for you, that's always a good test. Like just switch from mainnet to XDI, and that might get it to work. And then uh, one thing to notice is that when you vote on something, if you like, I don't think I voted for Banting DAO. So my first vote will cost one will cost one token. My second vote will cost four tokens. Third vote will cost nine tokens. And so uh, this is quadratic voting. And what's really cool is that it is in your best interest to, uh, you'll get more voting power the more projects you vote on. <clears throat> so split your vote up when you're strategizing about which ones you like. Be liberal. Any, any comments that you like, it's worth throwing them a couple votes uh, because it doesn't cost you hardly anything. It's really going to be your 30th vote, your 31st, you're, you know, like once you start getting into those numbers, then you really start to eat up your, your um, trust score. So <clears throat> the more trust tokens you have, the more votes you can, you can give. And if you want to increase your trust score, uh, at this point, probably the only way to do it is by actually uh, paying more membership dues. And that shows that you have skin in the game in the common stack and that, uh, and you get a larger voting, uh, you get more votes for being able to do that. Uh, that normally you would be able to also earn praise to get this trust score, but because we're voting this week, uh, probably the only way to get it is through uh, pain membership dues. Yeah, and, and so be liberal. And the other th cool thing with token log is actually this is the best place to see the various groups because you can also you can vote for them or you can go straight into their github issue and uh, in their github issue you see all of the details about them the video uh all of the com uh all of their content that they added and you can make a comment here if you want to add to it uh and and we can all see what people say about the various comments uh, i'll pass it back to you tim Okay, cool. Thanks for that, Griff. Uh, so I just want to say a few more things before we start uh, introducing some of the nominations. Uh, the first is, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the Commons um, Prize channel. It's under Community, and that way we can um, line them up to, to ask questions um, during this presentation or at the end. 
Uh, you can also just add questions on the GitHub issues themselves, as Griff just mentioned, as uh, as you have questions that you want to ask the community. Or if someone in your community wants to add support or advocate for the nomination, they can also add them into the issue themselves. Uh, I just want to introduce the Common Stack team to a little bit. We won't take too much time, but there is Griff, myself, Livia, uh, Ivy is here, Maria is here, uh, Gine is here, Usama is here, uh, and we're all really excited to have every, everyone else here as well. Uh, if you have any specific questions about the Commons Prize, Usama is the project manager, and uh, best to direct them at him or on the Common Prize channel itself. Because if you have a question, somebody else probably has the same question. And if we reply on the Commons Prize channel, then everyone can uh, benefit from the question and the answer. Okay, so I just want to check in and see um, who are, uh, I know that um, some res people responded to Usama that they would be here, and I just want to see, do we, do we, can we just take a check in? Um, can you just introduce yourself, your name, and your comments if you are, have a nomination here? I think, um, I know, jo yeah, maybe we'll do it one at a time. Giogo, I think that you are with the food, Forest Food Commons. And I don't know if you wanna just like one by one unmute and just say your name and the commons that you're with. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Hope you guys can hear me well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just um, sorry. Google. I'm just yeah. Thank I guess you. I'm just trying to take a roll call to make sure that the people, the commons that are here, the nominations that are here, um, I can make sure that we get to go through all of them. So, uh, Jogo, you're with Forest Food Commons, and Grail. To Toadow, Toadow Commons Toadow. is is my greetings. Cool. Greetings from the Philippines. <laughs> hey, and Kojak with the Villagers Commons. Nice to see you. And ex Damin uh, Xavier with all for Climate Dow. Okay, and then uh, we have TB with uh, Greens for Good. Um, do we have Newt with Cyber Physicals Guitar? Yes, okay, cool. And in do life, we have- it's, In real life, it's Torsen, so. Torsen. <laughs> Okay, yeah. nice to meet you, Torsen. Nice to meet you all. Um, and then Jack Lutt, was he able to join? I don't see his name here. Okay. Um, no, no, he's uh, our CEO. I'm Mattia Bernini, Design Director at Precious Plastic, and I'm really, really thrilled to be here and, and sharing how we sort of tackle the plastic waste problem through this sort of idea of a common uh, knowledge and platforms for people to, to tackle this huge problem. Okay, thanks, thanks, Mattia. Very nice to see you and welcome. And then Chris Burns is here. Yeah, I'm Chris Burns with Open Cultivars Commons. Great to be here. Cool. And then Catalyst with 40 Acres, I don't see. Okay. Is there anyone else that joined uh, that has an, uh, a Commons that they're nominating today? Oh, Wonka, hi. Yeah. <laughs> Gravity and okay. Uh, okay. Anyone else that joined that has a comments that they have nominated that wants some time to present today? Okay, so I think we have nine that we will work with. Okay, cool, excellent. So I think the way this will work is um, Griff will be help taking time, and we will uh, have um, about three to four minutes for those present to just introduce your nomination, your community, and share uh, why the Commons Prize would be important. And then we'll have about uh, one to two minutes for Q&A. Um, please feel free, if you have questions, to drop them in the Commons Prize channel. And we have some questions ourselves too. And I maybe we can pass uh, to uh, Diojo from Forest Food Commons to kick us off. So you'll have about three to four minutes to talk about uh, your commons okay. nomination. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, I, I'm here uh, in Brazil. I'm an agroforest in tropical 
a forest educator. And here, a lot of people, young people and young couples and people that live in the city are starting to do, create food forests. And, well, there's a problem that there's no incentives for this. And they all depend on the markets to get any income. And many times, Brazil is so big, we are far away from cities, we, and it's, everybody owns its own. So we are trying to create a learn-to-learn -learn system where apprentices are incentivized to level up while accessing mm -hmm. land to produce food, steward seeds, and create content through monthly journals. So these monthly journals will, will be minted as mm -hmm. NFTs with royalties that go to a regional multisig and a global multisig. Mm -hmm. And this content, this collective knowledge will be the start of a common global food forest. And actually a, a larger narrative, something that anyone can opt in and support groups to create food forests near any city in the world, anywhere, and, you know, digital nomads can have roots even without being in one place. And once we grow capacity, we can then start to own the supply chains and create new supply chains. And working with forests, working with trees, we are guaranteed that it stays for seven generations and more. It's not just short term, you know. So we will share design. We will have commonalities among bioregions in different parts of the world. We can share even seeds. We can share our hardships, our successes, our failures, and create a body of knowledge on this. And minting the journals and as NFTs is the way to we find to uh, support ourselves, share the revenue. Right now, we're trying to test this proof of concept. We are uh, fundraising for an MVP uh, with a mentor and three apprentices here in Brazil. And if it goes well, to, it's supposed to start on spring, September. And if it goes well, we want to uh, amplify it. Well, right on time. You had five seconds left on the three-minute mark. Uh, so I, I, have a, I have a quick question, uh, if we can just jump into the question section. Like, this sounds like very much like uh, just one project. When you guys, uh, after you get this NFT project up, do you have other ideas on um, things that you as a commons would do to expand beyond just the NFT projects? Like, are you open to other groups coming in and also offering other solutions besides this? Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we, uh, in the last refi hackathon, Planet Positive hackathon, we met folks from Orgo with our, they are uh, AR. Uh, and also revestured folks like from Metagame and the goal is to build a narrative, something that people can, you know, join a metaverse. I can enter the food forest over there in the U.S., you know, some chestnut forest from this U.S.-based team. And, uh, yeah, and level up. Go from apprentice to mentor to master to older and retire, you know, and within a community. So a gamified experience. But it all starts first block if we find the simplest way is to build this collective knowledge and grow capacity first. Any other questions for uh, Food Forest comments? Uh, yeah, I guess I have a question. Um, you you said that you want to incentivize training for new food forest stewards. Can you describe what that looks like? A food forest yeah. steward? Yeah. So basically, you know, there's a lot of pastures here. We're in Brazil, in this area of Brazil, it's deforested. It's not that 
it's only 5% of the Atlantic forest left. So we attack pastures, we transform it into food forests, and the the learn is is going through the seasons and go from spring to winter and back to spring again. And when you finish the cycle and start again, you you don't repeat the same mistakes you did in the last time. And this that is the learning. And if you can share that to others, others won't commit the same mistakes and they will share their different experience. So this sharing, qualitative sharing is, is nice. I, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, I think so. Thanks so much, Giojo. And um, in the interest of time, we're going to move on to the next nomination. And I'd like to invite Xavier with All for Climate Dow. Uh, if you'd like to share, I'm going to bring All for Climate Dow up here. And if you'd like to take three to four minutes to describe um, the organization you're with. And just a reminder, if you guys, if you guys have any uh, questions, feel free to put them in the Commons Prize chat room as they come to your mind. All right, thank you. Um, so thank you for having me. So I am Xavier from uh, All for Climate DAO. Um, basically, we, we started a few years ago. I'm myself a, a tech entrepreneur. I used to live in the States. Now I'm in Brussels, Belgium. Uh, in the past few years, I've been really involved with climate movements, such as Extinction Rebellion and others. And basically, what we, uh, we, we started All for Climate as a common infrastructure for all those climate movements. Because whether it's a Greta Thunberg movement or Fridays for Future, in every city, they start local groups, uh, other initiatives for the climate, community gardens, and so on. Whenever you start an activity, you need to start creating a nonprofit as soon as you want to, as you need to receive donations and so on. It's a pain in the ass. There is no need to reinvent the wheel every single time. So we just decided to create a common, a shared nonprofit that is basically shared among right now more than 150 different collectives, uh, mostly across Europe and a bit in Africa. Um, and then starting uh, last year, we started uh, transitioning to a DAO. Um, because it's obviously the future of nonprofit organizations for managing that as a common. And we've been working with Gitcoin uh, to basically start a climate category since December, GR12. Um, the next one is GR14 already, starting June 8th. Uh, so if you have projects for the climate, we will invite you to participate in that. And so basically, mm -hmm. All for Climate really hopes to basically create a common infrastructure for all the projects that want to do something for the climate emergency. And when I see what's happening here with your contest here, the Commons Prize, there is a lot of really great projects. Um, but kind of what is the common denominator of that? Is that they all try to find ways to create new economies where the people who spend time working on developing commons can, be, can make a living out of that. Right, right now you can only make a living mostly by working for the old this degen economy, right? And so, how do we create a common infrastructure uh, for the people who want to work for the community for a regenerative future? And that's basically why we apply to this uh, to this Commons Prize is to think together about how can we create a universal basic income, starting first with the the regions, right? So that they will have the time that they need to be able to create hundreds, if not thousands of different impact DAOs that will scale really, because in every neighborhood, in every region, we need people like all of you that are going to start working on those solutions. And so that's basically what we are uh, working towards. And next week, for those of you who are in Europe, we are organizing the first Regions Unite, bringing together regions from Web3, but also from climate movements, um, um, yeah, uh, a transition network, like all of those things together. Nice. And uh, that was the three minutes. If you had any last thoughts, you know, it's three to four minutes, so you can go over. Uh, and three to four start. minutes. I have one more minute. Um, yeah, but it's for final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, no, that I'm just like super excited. I, I really think that we, we desperately need system change, not climate change. Mm -hmm. And for that, we need to change from an economy based mainly on privately owned companies to an economy mainly based on commons, on cooperatives, and DAOs are, of course, the digital version of those cooperatives. So, a really big question to me is how do we 
accelerate that transition. Um, and, and maybe the, the thought that I want to share here is, instead of building a factory, one DAO, how can we basically try to scale that and build a common infrastructure that can be leveraged by any DAO, really, so that we can start and get to work? So, so I have a first question, and then I hope other people have questions. Uh, in, in, uh, in, like, for instance, this commons and a lot of commons, there's going to be a lot of people who uh, are really excited but have issues integrating into Web3. Do you, do you have a strategy for that? Are you going to focus mostly on like the Web3 for climate community or are you going to start right away expanding it to everyone and try to onboard people to Web3? I mean, starting with the climate emergency because this is probably the, the most massive important issue for our generation right now that needs to be tackled. Um, and right now there is a, it drives me crazy that uh, there is, we are fighting people for the climate and people in crypto are kind of fighting each other and that makes no sense because this is very much part of the solution. Um, and so we are trying to first bring people back to what unite us and those ideas of those regions unite events so that because it's not on social media that we're going to convince people it is by first rebuilding trust conversations. Um, and then, yeah, then onboarding them and like we've been doing with Ayueka, for example, in Uganda, planting trees over there, like uh, thanks to the last GR12, uh, they were able to raise $25,000 and that's been amazing for them. Um, something that was really hard to do in the legacy financial system. So to, to the short answer is start by what unites us. The most common thing that unites all of us is the fact that there is a climate emergency that we need to address ASAP. And then we can start each of us building what we know, what are our superpowers. And the superpower of this community is using those Web3 tools as a new coordination mechanism. Cool, thank you. And I don't see any other questions in our uh, Commons Prize, but I think you really represented this nomination so well, Xavier. And uh, if you do have qu uh, any questions. I have one question. Uh, how, how do you plan to coordinate all these, uh, like people doing labor to do the climate, climate change, but then how do you plan to coordinate? What are the milestones that you envision like uh, in the, the Commons, like in the first two to five years? And we're out of time, so keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wow, but that actually, that's why we, we need to work together to figure those out. <laughs> exactly. But the, the, the reality right now is that all the people that work for the community for deep adaptation right now, they don't receive any token. They are not being rewarded by the current legacy economic system, and that needs to change. Right? So there is many ways that we can talk about to think about how we can start doing that. But, but that's, it seems to be like a fundamental missing building block to enable the system change we need to operate and deep adaptation. Cool. Thanks, Xavier. And I'd also like to rec uh, encourage people to drop messages, if you can, in the uh, Commons Prize, because we have nine nominations to go through and we are almost at half point. So uh, I'd like us to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak today. Uh, thanks, Xavier. Any questions for him, drop in the Commons Prize channel or in um, this all for climate DAO. And maybe we can move on to Mattia and Precious Plastics next. Uh, I think Griff is on the timer, so I will just bring up your nomination and the floor is yours. Hello Mattia. everyone. Hi. Um, yeah, let me just start by sharing uh, uh, my screen with you. And what you see there is the map of active precious plastic organizations that are using our uh, knowledge and technologies to recycle plastic. Uh, we've been working on this project for the past uh, nine years. And basically our very uh, sort of anarchic, uh, revolutionary, if you want, uh, solar punk mentality was like, okay, we're going to design all of this knowledge. We're going to create all of this platform ecosystem, put them online for free and let people replicate what we do so that we can together find uh, ever improve, ever better solutions to the plastic waste problem. The past nine years, we have over 700 uh, organizations employing between four to six people um, that are able to recycle plastic 
every single day. So they wake up in the morning and all they do, they recycle plastic using our knowledge and using our ecosystems. Now, this caused two problems. I mean, it was very good for adoption. So we had a lot of people joining in. We had millions of people going in our website and using uh, our ecosystem on a daily basis, but it had two major flaws. One is that we've been broke ever since because we share everything for free and you know, it doesn't make it for a great business model. And second, uh, it's also really hard for these organizations to contribute back to precious plastic. Uh, as of 2022, there is really not an, an incentive for one of these thousands of people working on precious plastic on a daily basis to contribute back to the underlying protocol. And we really think that you know, establishing a DAO and really making the community own and govern the project will create these sort of incentives to enable you know, these thousands of people already investing tens of thousands of euro to start recycling to also really feel part, you know, feel like the owners of this project so that they hopefully will, you know, share back with the project their knowledge, their know-how, their new machines, their new molds, their ways, you know, really their inter interpretations of the project. So, you, so that's really why we want to transition to a DAO to really decentralize even further our operations so that we can really have like this, you know, tens of thousands of people really running a project by themselves. Because right now they simply copy everything that we do and replicate everything that we do. Um, but I think it will be an exponential uh, increase in impact if they also contributed into shaping how precious plastic works. And I can go on forever if you want, but yeah, we, have, we already have a, a lot of like possible utilities for the token. We have a marketplace processing hundreds of thousands of euros uh, on, a, on, on you know, every year, you know, really en enabling local economies. So we've been doing this for nine years. I guess that's the sound that I should shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you, Mattia, so much for this presentation. And uh, I'm cognizant that we have so many um, nominations here. So I think we're going to save all of the Q&A for the end instead of, um, and that way we can make sure everyone has a chance to present. Any Q&A questions that you have, just drop them in the Commons Prize and we'll come to them in the end. And so, uh, Wanka, if you would like to share Gravity Dow. Um, Gravity Dow is currently in second place, so uh, if you have a lot of support already. Um, please uh, take three minutes to share Gravity Dow and uh, share why uh, the world will benefit from Gravity Dow as a commons. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Tam, and thanks, everyone. Um, all social structures are uh, prone to conflict. And um, in the Web3 movement, because of um, the fast technology, we have a lot of, of really cool ideas uh, towards impacting the culture, but the technology itself is not going to make the cultural change we want to see. And um, because of this, um, uh, I think that um, conflict management can be seen as a public good because we all can benefit pr from a, a less violent culture, a more inclusive culture, and uh, to, have, to have peaceful means of transformation and mindfulness uh, on human interaction and more comprehensive organizations. So um, what we want to do is to um, take care of that amazing opportunity that the uh, Web3 movement have of, um, of, of not only promoting the technology, but actually promoting a cultural change uh, through the use of the technology. And with a commons like Gravity, we can uh, ensure that uh, uh, there is autonomy of being able to care for this cultural consen uh, concern. And also I think that DAOs, uh, because of the, their level of speciality, um, may find it hard for each of them to develop their own conflict management process. So we want to become a shelling point uh, that can develop standards, good practices, support and provide uh, services to meet uh, this need um, of managing conflict in a transformational way uh, in, the, in the space. 
and um, as we see the web3 uh, movement is very conflictive um, there's always hackings uh, there's always a, a very complex community and there's also people who is bad intentioned so um, we want to take care of 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 this um, cultural opportunity of of actually um, having more comprehensive systems um, that are being born with the use of this te technology. Thank you for that, Wonka. I think you still have 30 seconds left, uh, but if you have one last statement to make, otherwise we can have Q&A for uh, Gravity at the end. Yeah, we, we don't want DAOs to continue reproducing the violent and abusive systems that we see in, um, in our current um, institutions. We don't want to see uh, DAOs re reacting violently, not only within uh, themselves and within their community, but towards one another. So for us, it's very important to, to, to take care of that um, communication and relational fabric that we can build not only between uh, DAO contributors, but between uh, each DAO. So, so having um, good relationships and being able to manage um, disagreement, I think would be um, something very impactful. And that's why it can be seen as a public good. Thanks for that, Wonka. Uh, really, really excellent um, presentation. Uh, I think uh, Greens for Good, TB, if you would, uh, wouldn't mind presenting next, it would be a pleasure to hear more about Greens for Good. And I'll bring it up here on our... I was, uh, I was hoping that Maisem, who was also listening, would take the question because I, uh, I had to work uh, the whole night working on a on a contract, so I'm uh, not 100% capacity. But anyway, I don't know where he is. Uh, he's there, but uh, he's, uh, I don't know if he, he's able to... Oh, he can talk. Maxim, can you take this one? Okay, microphone problem, so let's not, wa not waste time. Um, we are very similar to Precious Plastic because we also um, are into creating hardware uh it's not for recycling plastic but it's for mm -hmm. processing food and uh it's beautiful what uh, precious plastic have uh, created over these nine years and see all these um, communities around the world that have adopted this hardware is uh, it's amazing i think that's uh, that speaks for itself um and so i guess what we want to explore with common stack is how can they how can we turn that into a success story without uh feeling that there is something negative about it i mean you know if people copy a design and do something with it um we believe that that's exactly what they, they're supposed to do uh, and they're not obliged to give us anything back because in the first place we create this thing for people to use it and the more people use it the more impact we have so the impact is there um i don't i don't think we have to force people to to give some to provide something back uh but uh, we want to find other mechanisms um not to leverage or squeeze something out of that movement um but actually go with it um, um you know um Instead of trying to pull something back and, and be frustrated that, you know, they, they're taking this and they're running with it, which is exactly what we wanted to do, um, how can we run with them um, and, and have other channels um, that could feed some energy and resources into further development, okay? Um, and literally decentralized development, um, because these machines, uh, can be uh, improved by other people all around the world. Okay, so we don't want to be a center of design of machines that everybody can copy. We want to foster a network, not just of users, but also of innovators. So we want other people to reproduce designs and improve on these designs and find ways to incentivize that throughout the ecosystem. So multiply the 
focal spots of improvement in design as well as uh, the users of these kind of devices all that in an ecosystem that could be incentivized through these web3 uh, tools okay so we're applying this to this project but um we're very interested in seeing the potential of these tools um, <clears throat> that we might be able to apply to other projects that we have in, in our ecosystem called Sensorica. Cool. Thank you so much for that very comprehensive uh, presentation for Greens for Good. And um, we'll save the questions and answers to the end just to make sure that everyone else can join. If you have any questions about uh, Greens for Good, please drop them in the Commons Prize and we'll have a chance to ask at the end uh, time. And uh, maybe we go to uh, Chris and open Cultivar Commons next if you um, are ready. And I'm gonna just bring it up on the screen and the floor is yours. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Chris Burns. Um, I'm an intellectual property lawyer and general counsel for an entity called Copyleft Cultivars, which is sort of at this point the kind of gravitational center of the community um, that we're sort of convening to create an open cultivars commons. And so what we mean by an open cultivars commons is, you know, around 40 years ago, um, it was hotly debated as to whether copyright law and intellectual property law sort of more broadly um, navigating how that would apply to software um, was quite contentious, especially at the copyright level. Um, today, that same debate in, in many ways is being hashed out um, with respect to how copyright applies to plant genomics. Um, patents, we already know, can and, and do and are wielded by many powerful corporations but copyright by uh, sort of its analogy to software seems highly likely to get rulings that um, at this point are, are still somewhat unsettled, but um, most of the lawyers, at least that I speak with, have kind of placed their bets on it, um, applying to plant genomics. And so what Open Cultivars Commons um, does is essentially does for the plant genomic community um, what open source logic did for the software community. Um, that I think is even, in, in my opinion, even more important for plant genomics because um, it has direct implications on being able to protect and preserve biodiversity. And also um, given the kind of innovations in Web3 can offer new strategies to actually protect and promote um, indigenous cultures and historically marginalized communities who have long carried the kind of traditions um, and, and sort of wisdom that goes into a lot of farming practices and sort of plant cultivation more generally. Um, why I think Web3 is also especially exciting and, and a commons um, here is through the sort of innovative use of IP NFTs. Um, and I'm also in, involved in the Molecule DAO ecosystem and have helped create um, through Vita DAO what's uh, called the Friends Legal Framework, which is a fair, reasonable, and ethical, non-discriminatory sublicense. There's still a lot of development we're doing there, but the idea is to use distributed ledger technology actually as a licensing ledger um, as opposed to perhaps a sort of fractional ledger for equities. This helps get around securities issues, among other things. But what I'm really excited about is actually using tools for co-governance, like we would get through a commons, to begin to kind of co-govern the intellectual property and ethical encumbrances that we can use um, alongside the kind of copy left or open source logic. Um, an analogy here may be the Organization for Ethical Source, which recently launched for the software community off of actually some original work I'd done for Corporate Accountability Lab, where, where I'm a co-founder. Um, so I'll pause there. I think I'm probably about out of time, but really excited uh, for, for uh, the opportunity to present. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. That was really uh, very, very interesting. Um, a very interesting new way of looking at, um, well, seeds and uh, planting. 
I um I see John. Um, I think maybe you probably are here to present refi today. So I've added you to the list. Is that right? Uh, I was kind of here to listen. Uh, happy to present uh, today or Monday, whatever works. But just saw all the amazing projects and wanted to learn who was doing what and see all the great folks. So whatever, whatever makes. Okay, cool. Well, welcome. Um, okay, so maybe we keep moving on. Uh, Torsten, are you uh, happy to present Cyber Physical Commons for Open Guitar? I'll bring that up now in token log. And the floor is yours. Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. So I'm my name is Torsten, and I'm from Alastal, and I'm really new in this community, and it, it's excited. I'm ex really a bit, little bit nervous. And what we what we plan to build and the application I wrote for this community for the nomination is to we are a community of many different people, researchers, educators, uh, luthiers, guitar builders, and and what we want to do is to uh, reduce the impact of the of the data sharing economy that we all live in now and the way is, so there are two components for it one is the guitar itself which is the starting point um, the other one is the community but before i want to talk about the guitar and the community i want to say a little bit about this community so basically what i'm what i there is kind of a fight between my my head and my heart so my my head tells me you have to pitch your project you have to pitch your project because it's important and yeah your community deserves it but my heart tells me just use this opportunity to work with all this cool and creative people who are already aligned because this is what i'm missing most when i talk to some people in my community guitar builders for example or or, or people who just create artwork but then just upload it somewhere and then get some likes so this is this is really one important aspect so even if if we do not win it will still be success so what we did is uh, we designed uh, Antonio, a you mute? sorry to interrupt Antonio, can you please mute me no sorry. No, yeah, Torsten, we can hear you. Sorry, we'll we'll server mute um, if if there's uh, someone who's not aware that they're not on mute. Continue. Okay. Okay, so maybe just a few words about the guitar. The guitar we designed using so using modern tools, but using the least amount of wood and only sustainable wood, and it's a frameless guitar and has no resonance body. So the idea is to get the best result from this guitar. You have to plug it into a computer and we use uh, like mathematical convolution and to create some kind of a we, we simulate a resonance body for the guitar and we can make all kinds of noises with this and what we and what we use the guitar for is we we conduct workshops so we have a workshop now planned uh, in the school lab which is in a museum in Dresden together with Ukrainian children and we are really excited it's the first time that we really think we get out of this niche to to only work for for children who like basically uh, live in a, in an academia household. So this is really exciting and new for us to do this. Um, and cyber physical commons is just the idea. Everything we did in the last ten years, even before Open Guitar emerged, was related somehow with robotics and sensors. So we put basically we built sensors for everything and put sensors on everything, but we never had this this cool thing that is at the same time a sensor and at the, and at the other at the same time a, a, a musical instrument so and basically yeah that's all thanks for listening and appreciate your feedback thanks i'm not going to ask this question but i just i in my mind i thought oh can this be extended for all kinds of open instruments open hardware for all kinds of instruments uh, i have friends who are theremin players who have all these like schematics for building your own theremin and i could i just could imagine this expanding to many many things okay but I, started, yeah. don't ask um, this question okay yes yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel like it's going to be a great answer and we'll save it for for the remaining time at the end um and can we pass to uh clueless um oh clueless isn't here okay so refi commons doesn't have somebody here right 
sorry, my mistake. Okay. Um, and then maybe uh, Grael, if you wouldn't mind presenting Jo Dow, and I hope I'm correcting both your name and the Commons name correctly. Please, please correct me so we can all say it the right way. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I noticed actually um, often Europeans are not sure how to deal with my, my pen name here. I, it's actually, my name's Al Gray, so it's Gray Al. <laughs> that, that, that's all there is to it. Um, uh, actually, on, on Twitter, it's Banal the Gray Al. Uh, and so the joke there is that in Tagalo, Banal means blessed or holy, so holy grail. And then, of course, in English, it's kind of like boring and lame. So uh, I'm a bit of a sucker for like puns that... Uh, transcend languages. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a digression, but um, uh, good to see you all again. Uh, or um, I'm meeting a lot of you for the first time. I remember Kojak. Uh, we we chatted about bonding curves uh, a few months ago. Um, so good to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Um, my my thing is pretty simple. I've been in the Philippines for six years now. Um, so uh, there's a lot of People, uh, tricycles is a motorcycle with a sidecar on it, and they drive people around for fares. Um, and uh, we, our business is doing electric tricycles with solar. So that's, that's what I've been doing since I've been here. I've, I was installing solar panels today. Um, but there's a device that you can put into an existing motorcycle for like 15 bucks US um, that will save them uh, like 10% on fuel costs per day plus reduced pollution. Uh, it's got the tests. I, I would invite you to check out the page to view the links and stuff. It's it's built by disabled people locally in the Philippines. It's a very awesome company that's doing that. Um, and what I was kind of wanting to do was bundle that together with uh, a governance token to a TODAO. Um, traditionally, tricycles use the to Tricycle Operator Drivers Association. So TODAO would be Tricycle Operator Distributed Autonomous Organization. Um, so if you can buy the fuel savings and then bundle that with a governance token, you could kind of maybe leapfrog um, the uh, moving into the official economy because these uh, these uh, tricycle drivers are kind of operate in what they would call the gray economy, which is um, existing outside of like they don't get government benefits or any of that stuff we're accustomed to in North American Europe. Um, and uh, and so doing a, a DAO, um, you could potentially leapfrog that technology and that you're pooling resources from the energy savings towards accelerating the transition towards electric vehicles, putting up solar, maybe doing health benefits and stuff like that. Um, so that's the idea, uh, all said. Uh, I don't know how much time I have left. Um, if I have enough time, I'll, I'll just, uh, just one quick mention. Um, I, I, I think, uh, Griff, that I listened to a podcast that you did one time about doing something like that with bicycles. Am I correct on that? Is that something you did one time? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. Um, so, I, I mean, I, like, I, I've kind of like slowly learned about Eleanor Ostrom. I've got her rules, games, and common pool resources up on my screen right now. Um, so one of the key central questions of her book is what types of institutional and physical variables excess, excess affect the likelihood of successful resolution of CPR dilemmas? Straight out of Ostrom's book. Um, very, very iconic for me. So uh, is that time? Probably close. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Uh, that, was, that was excellent. Gra Gra Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kojak, are you uh, willing to present the Villager Commons next? So let me bring it up. Uh, here we are in token log. And so we can also look at it together. Okay, the floor is yours, Kojak. Uh, You're me muted, Kojak. Oh, Kojak, you need to unmute. Is it clear now? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, fine. Thank you. Sorry. Oh no, you muted again. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now where I'm coming from is that uh, unlike almost every other participant who've got a community, mine is more of a concept. But I've been interacting with uh, you know you know communities in Africa and in India for where I'm I'm from, uh, and uh, it really looks very 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 exciting as far as I'm concerned. Basically, we are the uh, it's the opportunity of 
cracking you know one of the biggest problems which mankind is facing you know now <laughs> it, it might look like a massive exaggeration but then i'd like to fall back on what griff uh, said some time back about creating the uh, the commons is probably the biggest opportunity and this is something like that and the way i state it is is that your village or rural communities have got extremely high economic returns and they have actually uh, all the factors of, of 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 production which is actually needed to become you know productive that is land labor and capital in the form of of you know digital technology your mobile phones you know something like 10% of, um, of of the villagers have you know smartphones sir. and uh, at, at the same so when you have such a high economic returns and when uh, your you know developed economies have interest rates which are close to zero in normal market economies you know the, you know it, you know there should be a flow of funds from the high i mean, I mean high rates of interest to your your uh, to these particular economies it's it's not happening because there's a lack of trust but web3 is is basically meant to tackle that and it is possible and i've i've actually experimented with uh, these communities in africa which we are trying to model also using catcat and uh, let me you know let me just give you one particular example and 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 and, and the fundamental you know uh, premise which i say is that instead of focusing on the technology what should be focused is on on the needs of the villagers for this thing and it and it, it should start with basic needs water food uh surpluses processing and you know trades and uh, other services don't i mean if you, if you are just focused on perfecting the technology top up and and assuming it to catch on i uh, my approach is different i would take a particular village and actually test out technologies and I mean, and the way it, it, it's happened for in in uh, in my experience was I am running short of time. No, okay, uh, was that a particular? Uh, pardon me. Um, a particular village in Africa. You know, uh, I basically wanted to int- introduce portable water. So. Um, the first assumption was to, was to bring in uh, you know rainwater harvesting but we looked in deeper we found that water was available at you know you know something like 20 feet and all that we needed was hand pumps and i mean uh, to to cut a very long story short what what we found is just two hand pumps and if each villager paid 4 cents per uh, per family they the whole the, you know the whole village you know would be in assured of uh, you know what is supply this thing and thank you thank you kojak i i yeah. really appreciate i think this is it's super interesting and i appreciate you sharing but uh i think i'm going to have to just cut you off so we can share the last okay, uh, the last presentation too i just want to say this is it's really um inspirational i think what what you're thinking about and what you're doing mm-hmm. and i noticed that you said uh the other resources to help make this the commons deployment a success you mentioned will redic and grassroots economic and i want to share that that is the project that's currently in first place so if you want to reach out to him uh and maybe combine these these efforts that could be something that uh that would be i think great for the this larger commons idea yeah i've already reached out to him and he's agreed to collaborate but he i mean he's i mean he's at a different level but uh, we've got we, we've been chatting we, we've got contradictions but let's see what happens okay cool all right and last up um john uh i think that we have refi here in fourth place so if you would not care to share uh we have about 5 minutes left so 3 4 minutes for sure. um this this nomination the floor is yours thanks thanks everybody i'm so grateful to be here and meet all of you um my name is john i am working on a project with a bunch of other friends in this space called refi dao and um this is kind of an effort to try and steward and accelerate this massive emergence at the intersection of climate action and web3 I began my journey back in August creating a list of projects who were 
um, experimenting at this intersection, there was like 25 projects. And now there's over 207 on our directory site. And with this explosion of experimentation, we're seeing a real challenge to how we actually coordinate these efforts and ultimately have a positive real world impact with on-chain activities. And in my role as head of growth at Toucan, I witnessed how hard it is to basically design incentive structures that have the second and third order consequences that you're looking for. And so our idea here is to um, really collaborate with Common Stack and figure out what are the best primitives to unlock next level of collaboration around um, you know, restoring the earth in effect, both people and the planet. Our mission is to accelerate impact for people and the planet. And we've got a few kind of primitives that we're thinking of that can do this. The first is something we're calling Refi ID, which is like a kind of passport to the DAO, and it could be a passport to any DAO. Um, and this allows you to say, this is who I am, this is what I stand for, and I'm going to create economic alignment with everybody in this movement by agreeing to a kind of continuous token swap, whereby I commit a percentage of every transaction through my wallet into this treasury, knowing that I will get these refi tokens in return as a function of the impact that this community is defining together. And that kind of leads to this next stage, which is a huge problem in the impact space, which is how do you define impact? And what we want to do with impact gauges is to create an open source um, and collaborative model for communities to define impact, uh, similar to what Curve has done. But instead of just focusing on liquidity, you can incentivize any particular on-chain activity by defining a specific um, you know, event on-chain as being impactful. People can stake their refi tokens on that gauge. And then suddenly you have this ability to coordinate lots of people towards a specific aim, like burning low quality carbon, say BCT and getting it out of the system. Or maybe it's attending you know, a regenerative village event uh, on the ground that uses NFT ticketing. And so what we're hoping to do with these two primitives is try and really experiment with a way to coordinate the entire refi movement together in a fashion that's open and permissionless and transparent, but also highly adaptive, so that when we recognize certain things aren't having the impact that we intended, people can move their refi tokens into a different gauge and stimulate new incentives. So that's kind of um, some of the core economic primitives. And then behind that, we're trying to basically foster you know, the commons of, of relationship and culture to say, how can we really build deeper connections between people in this space using intellectual capital? through you know, a unified job board that lets anybody find their place in this movement to match founders together who are looking you know, a technical founder with a business-driven founder or management expert. And we're actively facilitating these relationships with folks in small groups in these founder circles uh, to try and yeah, steward this movement. So thanks for the, the few minutes there. That was, I think, three or four. Um, and happy to answer any questions. Hope to come along and meet all the awesome folks who are jamming on this. Cool. Well, we have two minutes left, so I just want to say thank you to Diojo with the Food Forest Commons, Xavier with the All for Climate DAO, Matia uh, with the Precious Plastics, Juanca with Gravity DAO, uh, TB with Greens for Good, Chris with Open Cultivars Commons, Torsten with uh, Cyber Physicals Commons for Open Guitar, uh, Grael for to Dow with to Dow, Kojak with the Villager Commons, and John Ellison with Refi Commons. I definitely encourage everyone to um, promote and advocate for their Dow for their Commons or the ones that they feel strongly about. If you have you are a trusted seed member and have trust tokens, then to vote uh, and to engage in the issues themselves. If you want to ask questions or maybe suggest uh, future collaborators for these initiatives. Anything else you want to add before we close, Griff? No, just thank you guys so much, and uh, make as many comments as you can in the form in GitHub. Um, go check out your own GitHub, um, all of the projects. Watch the GitHub for questions there. It's a great place for questions, or in the Commons Prize channel, uh, so we can have uh, increase engagement and answer any of the community's questions. That thank you all. That was great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.